Once we've done the assets and liabilities, we then have to split up the production costs amongst, um, I suppose, A and B, the share that they have of them. Now, the way that we do this is to use, is to look at the production statement. Uh, in this case, we don't really need to have one because we simply get told they spent five hundred thousand dollars on production costs, and seventy percent of things were distributed. So. The first thing to do is debit cost of production. Um, you can have separate accounts for the different types of cost of production, wages, electricity, gas, whatever it happens to be. Um, but the cost of production overall will actually disappear. So if you want to put them all into one account, that works too. But what we show here is A and B's share of cost of production. Um, A has 40%, B has 60% of that $500,000. We then pick up uh, a credit cost of production undistributed amount, which is picking up the amount, the proportion which wasn't distributed, which is that 30%. So 30% of $200,000 is $60,000, and 30% of $300,000 is $90,000. Whatever is left, 140 and 210 respectively, is credited to the interest in joint venture. These are the amounts which are going back to the venturers, um, and this actually picks up that missing amount which we hadn't got rid of uh, when we credited the interest in joint venture in the previous video. Now, once we've done all of that, it would seem like that's all that we need to do with it. But at this point in time, we haven't actually added the cost of the equipment depreciation onto the inventory. Now, we know that any overheads which are directly related to an asset need to be included in the cost of that asset. So we do need to include the cost of that depreciation, the cost of the use of that asset, in the inventory costs. So we'll look at A first. So A decides... Uh, to use, and we haven't given you this information, but I've assumed that A has taken a 10 year life for its asset. And if you look at A's share of that equipment, A had a 240,000 value of equipment on its books divided by 10 gives you the $24,000 of depreciation, which is debited to cost of production and credited accumulated depreciation. Once we've done that, we're ready to create the inventory. And the inventory is then debited $164,000 and all of the cost of production uh, basically disappeared and we end up with $164,000. And we can see that coming from the $24,000 that we debited here plus the $200,000 here, which gives us $224,000 taking away the 60000 there. So we're actually just putting in the net amount of cost of production into inventory because we haven't been told any information about whether they've sold all of it or sold none of it. So we're just, just putting it all in inventory and then from that point you can have cost of sales if they sell it um, or just leave it in inventory if they don't. So doing the same thing over in B, B has decided to use a 10-year uh, useful life for its equipment as well. It started with equipment at $360,000, so that's accumulated depreciation of $36,000 and cost of production of $36,000. Moving down to the inventory, that's based on 246, which is 300,000 plus the 36,000 minus the $90,000 gives you the $246,000. And once you've done that, again, you've got the value of the inventory which has been distributed on the books of the venturers.